Hey guys, so today we're doing a little review of the XS10 from Fujifilm. I get it today from a friend, Robbie. Maybe you know him already from some other videos of me. I will link his channel in the description. And I think that this is the best vlogging camera that you can get for around $1,000, maybe $1,200 or something like that with the kit lens, maybe a bit less, not sure. Um, but it's a great setup, it's super lightweight and as you can see, it has a pretty big grip, even if the camera itself is very small, what makes it very nice to hold. It's actually one of the most comfortable cameras I ever had in my hand. There are a few downsides, of course, the batteries are a bit smaller, so you should definitely carry some more batteries with you if you want to film over a whole day. But aside from that, it's really nice and it has really great video functions. So the rest of the video I will shoot with this camera and let's figure out how it looks and how good you can vlog with it. So now I'm on the Fujifilm XS10 together with the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens, which is obviously not a like premium lens or something like that, but I would recommend to buy this camera together with this kit lens because of the 15 millimeters, which perfectly allow you to vlog if you get the 18 to 55 millimeter, for example, then the framing is much closer to your face and that sucks obviously. So now that's a lot better and I'm also using the Rode Video Micro microphone. I think that's a good microphone for beginners as well. It's lightweight, you don't need batteries and it's quite affordable as well. So I would say, ah, now it gets a bit bright here. So let's explore the park here a little bit. It's like half park, half coffee, coffee where we are and get some shots here. I will do some vlog shots like right now, but I will also test how this lens and camera combination performs for B-roll. That's a pretty nice place there. They combined a cafe with some fake um, artificial waterfalls. Looks cool, I like this idea. They have many cafes here in the north of Thailand that are quite similar, like fancy made for Instagrammers and with some extra stuff. It's really cool. I actually don't know the name of this cafe because it's written in Thai letters. I have to ask my girlfriend for that. So I also want to share the settings that I use on the XS10 today and that's that I shoot everything in Eterner, which is a film simulation, also referred to color profile. And Eterner is great because it gives you a bit more dynamic range. It's a quite kind of flat picture profile with pretty nice filmic colors, so it looks a bit more cinematic straight out of camera. And I flattened this profile out to get even more dynamic range and less contrast. So I went to the menu and changed the tone curve to minus two for shadows and minus two for highlights. So therefore you can see more details in the shadows and the highlights at the same time. So you get more dynamic range. And that's basically everything that I changed there. I record most of the stuff that I know I will not slow down later, like the vlogging part here right now in 4K with 24 frames per second or 23.97. And the other stuff like B-roll footage in 1080p with 60 frames per second, because I will likely slow some of that stuff down so then it's definitely better to have 60p available. I also got a shot here in slow motion mode with 120 frames per second in 1080p which is which looks really great um, but I would not recommend to go to 240 p because from my experience with most cameras the quality there is greatly reduced so in 120p you still get a decent quality and I had a few autofocusing issues in the intro as you could probably see so I changed the autofocus settings now to sensitivity plus 5 and speed negative 4 so the slowest on both so that it locks on the subject and doesn't hunt around so much. I hope that helps, we'll see. Aside from that for all the b-roll footage I used manual focus because I'm behind the camera and then you have this AF on button there that you can use so it focuses one time on your subject and the focus stays there and that's generally what I want to have when I shoot b-roll so for b-roll it's it's very easy and I just checked the footage after changing the autofocus settings now and it actually looks good I can't see any hunting anymore at least on the small screen Okay, so far I shot everything on the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens. But let's also try what this camera can do with other lenses. So we have here the 
50, uh, no, the 33 mm f1.4 from Viltrox. And if you want to get the XS10, I can recommend the Viltrox lenses because I used it before on my Fujifilm X-T4 and they all perform pretty well. So I would say let's change the lenses and get some portrait shots of Robbie here. Actually quite impressed with this lens like the autofocus seemed to work really good I used exactly the same settings like everything set to the slowest and as you could see in the shots it looked perfectly fine to me and great thing is this lenses are pretty cheap and you get a nice shallow left of field there so the background is out of focus which looks great so there you have an affordable the one that works I personally used the 23 millimeter from Wiltrox on my Fujifilm X-T4 and I also tested the 85 millimeter from Wiltrox which is a big big for this camera and they also performed well so generally the Wiltrox lenses are great there's also a 56 millimeter it's great for portraits um, but actually now we got the battery problem the battery is about to die so we first have to ch recharge the camera now so definitely get some more batteries for this one. Now let's also talk about some other questions that you might have about this camera and by the way if I should not answer all questions just feel free to leave me your questions in the comments below or answer every comment so then you know more. Um, at first you might ask yourself what about F-Log like log footage with this camera and, and in, instead of Eterna like I only shot Eterna here and there's a good reason for that this camera only has internal 8-bit footage and not 10-bit and it's generally better not to shoot log when you have 8-bit like log is generally better for 10-bit because it kind of compresses the image it packs a lot of dynamic range inside the image and therefore it's better to have 10 bit but I think you have a pretty good bit rate here at 200 M bits so the one occasional shot where you really need a bit more dynamic range it should be possible to use F-Log and color grade it later in post of course that requires some skills and the use of LUTs etc so if you're a total beginner it's not for you anyway but generally I can recommend to just use Eterna or Classic Chrome on this camera that are like my favorite colors especially Turner is very very flat already so you get a lot of dynamic range there you can also turn the dynamic range optimizer on in the menu then you get a bit more dynamic range that works as, as well I had that on in a few shots here as well and aside from that what other cameras does this camera compare to like I would say the closest camera really it's a bit cheaper though it's the Canon M6 Mark II which is also a great camera I recently did a video about that as well but the Canon M6 Mark II has much lower bit rate so you don't get such a good video quality it doesn't have Fuji colors like Fuji colors are just amazing as you could probably see in the video there was not much color grading I will add a bit of contrast and saturation just to make it pop a little bit more but that's it you, you don't really have to do much with the colors because they look so good Canon colors are also good but they are not as good as on Fuji and it needs a bit of tweaking or a bit more tweaking also the Canon M6 Mark II doesn't have so much stabilization like here especially with the 15 to 45 millimeter lens I have optical image stabilization in the lens then I have sensor stabilization which is called IBIS and especially in the b-roll shots I also had digital stabilization on most of the time so three times stabilization directly in camera which is great it makes shooting straight out of your hand so easy and this whole video I did not use a gimbal or any other stabilization I shot everything straight out of my hand I will probably use a bit of post stabilization but I don't think it needs that much because it already looked pretty smooth on the screen and I think that's a big advantage because on the Canon M6 Mark II you only have digital image stabilization and optical image stabilization on some lenses which also works but it's not as good as with the Fujifilm X-S10 here. Also this camera is so small and it still grips really nice because it has this big grip on there which I also really enjoy. Only thing that I didn't really like about this camera so far is the viewfinder. The viewfinder I mean it looks good when I look through it but it's like very small and it, it like doesn't feel nice on your eye so if you do a lot of photos with your viewfinder and you only want to shoot occasional video maybe you should also be aware of that. Oh and I just had a look for the camera and lens combination that I use here. I could not find it as a kit on amazon.com but here in Thailand I saw it in every store so it seems like here in Thailand maybe Asia completely it's more common 
but in in maybe the US or Europe or so on seems like this kit is not available so then just get the single body and buy the lens extra it's not expensive like the body is thousand dollars and the lens is about hundred seventy dollars so that's really good for starters and I mean it's a bit more expensive than a Canon M6 Mark II for example but you also get a bit more and I think you're very happy with this camera even if you let's say you're going on a professional shoot you can still attach an external monitor to this camera and then you have external 10 bit recording etc so very professional footage and it's also a system that you ca can grow into like you can buy more Fujifilm lenses and eventually in a year or so you can buy the Fujifilm X-T4 or if it comes out an X-T5 or whatever and that's why I also think it's a good system to invest in like it's pretty solid and it can only get better so I hope you enjoyed this review and as mentioned before leave me in the comments below if you have some, have some questions and if this video was helpful give me a like and also don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notifications button for upcoming videos see you